I got some catalogs. And would you guys be interested in kind of taking a trip down memory lane and going sure. through some slides? Um, and after that, I'd be happy to open up the T16 or the Naboo Fighter if you guys like. But I think we should take a look at these. So I'll point out real quick. James Salzberg says Hasbro loves them spring-loaded missiles. Yeah. Hasbro, Galoob, Kenner with Jurassic Park, everything in the 90s. T Terminator, Last Action Hero, everything had missiles. All right. So I'm going to go full screen on this see them. Let me just make sure I'm on slide. I think I'm on the right side. This is the first page. This is the one that came with the uh, oh, the green, that green uh, speeder from episode two. Oh, the so, Naboo. The Naboo speeder from episode one. Oh, I'm sorry. It was hers right there. Uh, Wessel. Zam Wessel, bounty hunter. It was Zam oh, Wessel. That, that one. Okay. It's a changeling. Uh, then you got Padme with the Reno Escape. She's got the chain around her neck and the breakaway pillar with quick draw action. These all had some kind of like a action. Um, uh, I mean, Mace Windu's going nuts right there. Look at that. That is, and you know what? I opened up recently. Uh, the I had the um, the Django Fett, and I I remember that being a spoiler because when you open up the package. His head is just a magnet, and it comes right off. And uh, I think people were. And then you've got uh, Obi Wan um, with the course and chase scene. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead. We're going backwards here, I think, with these. So then um, we've got these force flipping attack. The courageous Jedi Knight fights for his life in a Geno Genosian uh, arena. Right again, count. And then, is that a water uh, force power attack? No, that was just a, a thing you would stick in there. And then, uh, right, it would like a missile or something? On which one? Uh, on the Mace window over here. He's got so, like a thing coming out of his sleeve. Yeah, so what Mace is trying to tell you, everyone, is make sure you spay and neuter your droids. <laughs> He's hitting them right in the, in the droid dick. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going backwards here. So the next one is great because I remember these, but I, you know, the way they have them out of the box, these were the seven inch uh, force unleashed figures, powerful sculptures of Star Wars characters in some of their most electrifying moments. Jango Fett and ba Boba Fett. Jango Fett looks cool, but Boba Fett just looks like he's yelling and hiding behind his bed, uh, which is a little weird. I mean, Darth Maul there, is he doing a handstand and then also whipping out some force? But I don't remember him doing that in the movie. That's not his he, most electrifying moment. He didn't. This is like a pose from Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. And Anakin there just trouncing that uh, that droid and uh, dual wielding there. Uh, so he was, uh, Jordan saying he was never a fan of these uh, Unleashed figures. And then uh, Salzburg saying uh, Nerd Selleck has a great figure about going to Midnight Mass Star Wars in either uh, King of Prussia or Langhorn. You know, that's uh, I would like to see that because, uh, yeah, I've got a uh, not Midnight Madness because I don't think the mall was allowing us to open at midnight. But, uh, we opened it early the next day. Uh, so, yeah, mall doing a spot of ballet there. Yep. And then uh, Radical Toys, uh, Adam, drop in and say hello, Will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to have you here. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the, uh, yeah, those Unleashed statues. I don't think they sold well. So then we've got a uh, Django Fett Slave one. And, you know, looking at it, I just wanted to compare the paint. Back. It looks like the same toy, obviously. But um, that blue, and it's much cleaner in this one. Uh, you know, Boba Fett Slave one looks like uh, – it's been through the ringer a little bit there. So that's cool. Um, I liked these kind of, uh, these Jedi Starfighters. I, I told you I recently rewatched episodes one and two. Uh, just kind of put them on as I was going to sleep. And I would say some of these ships are kind of cool. Um, I like these. Uh, what do you guys think? What's well, interesting because the ship never did that in the films. That's, that's toyetic. Oh, okay. Um, and it reminds me a lot of Star Fox, the way that the R wings would go into all flight mode. But I think it looks as a kid, I would be totally into that. Yeah. 
I like it, uh, and I like it in, in the fact that you could also use it just for other toy lines. It looks like just a kind of, uh, you know, a cool starfighter. Uh, so that's that's pretty neat. Uh, so let's go here. Oh, and then here we had, oh, there was a commercial I wish I got. It had all the Episode 1 board games that came out around the time, and they all sucked. And the commercial makes them sound, like, so cool. Uh, there's a Battle for Naboo like board game where you like use like uh, little catapults and like launch balls at like cardboard standing uh, things. It's so lame. But the Jedi decks, the complete Star Wars universe in the palm of your hand. Electronic Index is the ultimate Star Wars resource guide. It also includes an organizer, trivia games, and more. Man, you know, we wonder where the smartphone came from. There you go, guys. And then uh, this one is great. Uh, does anyone have this R2? This is a state-of-the-art functional droid companion, walks, talks, and responds to your commands, navigates to find you, recognizes more than 30 phrases, dances, sings, and play games, has a simple arm that can carry up to a 12-ounce can. So this was totally meant to get you beer and much more. The, so. the modern ones, if you haven't seen them, it doesn't hand you a beer. It's just that it has a refrigerator built in, and it just brings the little fridge up to you. Hey, that works for me. That's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, I think this uh, is an exclusive offer. You could join the Hasbro Attack of the Clones holiday toys in July. Uh, this is some kind of thing and you could call. Um, so Ian Sweeney saying the single person fighters were always great as toys. Simply, yeah, simple, carry to figure, easy to mimic fight with, uh, flight with. Yeah. Yeah. One hand and you could, you could, uh, you know, move it around. Always, uh, always a great thing. Uh, the big ships are great, but like uh, the Naboo uh, Royal Starship, you know, for example, it's just it's a playset more than a ship you can play with. Uh, so then here we have the next catalog, and this is back to the power of the force. So we've got hulking Chewbacca up there, Han Solo and Hoth here. Um, we got ripped Dagobah Luke and Swole Vader. Uh, the TIE Fighter pilot also, which I hope I have somewhere. Uh, then Yoda, Tuscan Raiders, C-3PO, and then a little list here, too, where uh, it lists all the other characters that you can get. So that's pretty fun. Does Do you have uh, do you have ripped? Uh, let me see. Uh, James Salzberg, please let me know if you received your box. I saw it wasn't delivered today, but I'll get to you this week. Uh, yep, he's keeping an eye out for that. Uh, I mean, I got to tell you, it looks like Luke with his shirt ripped open like that and his chest out uh, on this skiff. He's looking for a little more than power converters when he goes to Tashi Station in this thing. Yeah, he's, he, uh, he's looking to get something else. I don't know. He, he, he's opinion. also known as Eternia Luke. <laughs> yeah. Um, I and, remember uh, these. These Well, I actually have one on my desk right now. The, the crowd control right there, right? Yeah. But I remember that, that desert sports skiff. And as a kid, I was like, was that in the movie? Was that in the game? Yeah. No, it was just a toy. Dude, you see this guy coming across, coming up over a dune with that shirt like that, the hair rippling? Chicks are all over him. That's uh, Hulkamaniac Luke. Uh, and I don't remember ever seeing this one in the movies. No, it wasn't. Uh, let's see this Han Solo with Smuggler Jetpack. So there's like little gripping arms that he uses to smuggle things. Yeah. And then a, like a yeah. harness straps them in. To me, um, that was always the least interesting of the different packs. Yeah, that doesn't look very cool. Um, I, it would be cooler if it was something like he used, like he wore like a space helmet or a spacesuit, And he jumped in this little craft like while they were like searching him. And he would like kind of play cat and mouse and like hide around the outside of his ship <laughs> with the goods, you know, and then like maybe go back in. It was like a little, like kind of a skate pod or something. So then we have got the uh, Millennium Falcon. Great, great toy, great play set. Obviously it's undersized, but you know, how big can you get when it's little kids? Imperial speeder bike, Rebel Snow Speeder, fantastic toy. And the X-Wing Fighter, we just saw that. And yeah, that's a great one with electronic sounds. Can't wait to get the batteries in that and try it out. It's like Christmas morning for me. Uh, so then we've got the uh, Shadows of the Empire, which we just saw. We've got um, that hand sucked and the straps are molded into uh, the detail. So, yeah, even when you take him out of that, he's still 
He's still doing that. Uh, and Ian's saying he liked that crowd control stormtrooper. Yeah, Badger, you like that. One too. Cool. I mean, not practical. I don't know, you know, like what exactly is going on with that, but. I mean, you can take off the arms and it could yeah. just be a stormtrooper with a jetpack. So we're going out of Star Wars territory now, guys, but I think uh, definitely with the audience here, I think you guys are going to like these. Uh, do you remember Gargoyles? These are other lines that uh, Kenner Hasbro had at, at the time. So it's kind of cool to see what else was on store shelves. Uh, any Gargoyles fans here? I I was okay with the cartoon, but I was out of toys by that time, so I never okay. I never bought or played with these. So these Gargoyle toys look like these were kind of later on in the series because you've got deluxe battle double Gargoyles with all new battle armor. So that looks like a lot. That's like extra extra. Um, yeah, good cartoon. Um, one of my favorite shows, kind of darkish for a kid show. Yeah, yeah, this was a oh, yeah. Disney uh, property. And then down here, you got the hardwired gargoyles, uh, which looks like they were like cybernetically enhanced. So I don't remember. Do you guys have those toys? Because uh, I don't remember them at all. It was one of the few Disney cartoons or shows where instead of the parents being the one killed off, it was like all the all the children and the eggs that were killed off. Yes, and then we uh, so the many, many, many costumes of, uh, I mean, uh, Radical Toys, great show. Watch it along with Disney shows like Goop Troop. Yeah, sure. Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous. Darkwing Duck. <laughs> when there's trouble, you call DW. I love Darkwing Duck. That was like one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, yeah, non day glow. Yep. Uh. Gargoyle sent a bad message to kids because they were stoned all day. <laughs> all right, Jim. And uh, so, yeah, the Batman lines back then were a little wacky. Uh, definitely kind of neon armor Batman. I mean, there it is right there. You just see neon armor. But I got to tell you, this one caught my eye. Uh, it's a triple action vehicle set. It is a Batmobile. Converts to three different vehicles. It converts from the bat boat to the bat uh, mobile to the bat wing with attachments, and then the bat mobile, the power center. So that looks like a like a mini playset inside one. Uh, is mm -hmm. that two different toys, or is that one toy that converts? No, this it, is one toy up top, and then on the bottom is the other toy. It, yeah, it's all one toy. You take off the wings. You have. The the car no, and then two toys. I think the top one is the triple action, and the bottom one is the Batmobile and the Batmobile Power Center. Oh, I see what you're okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyone have these? Uh, anything like this? I'd be interested in that triple changing uh, Batmobile there, though. That's kind of a cool concept. You got the Batmobile, the Batboat, the Batwing. I like that. I know Galoob at the time was making a lot of play sets like with star Wars and aliens where you open, they make like a head sculpt or a vehicle and you open yeah. it up and it's a whole play set. So then in addition to that, they also had legends of the Batman, which I think I pulled some of these figures out when I was, um, uh, uh, sorting for the toy show. And I'm pretty sure I had laughing man, Joker, which was the, uh, pirate, the Buccaneer Batman and someone else. But that sky bat vehicle caught my eye. That's pretty absurd. And I love, uh, absurd, creations like that they 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 thrill me then we have the total justice line which uh featured the justice league and then you've got the flash there but he was locked in that running pose with only five points of articulation and all those clip-on um kind of speed lightning things yeah rob liefeld style figures yeah robin's so extreme here and the only one here that i think looks kind of cool was his dark side figure uh, actually is the only one that looks kind of normal. Everyone else has got like the most insane, like the Hawkman, that green lantern, his legs almost look like they're bending in ways that human legs should not bend. Uh, uh, I figured you guys were going to like this. Beast Wars. Remember like that, the song? It, just, it was like a bunch of like techno music and it's Beast Wars. Yeah, I had, geez, I remember, I had several of these. I have a couple on my shelf right now, but I had Arm Armora, Dillo, Snapper, Rhinox. I have Cheetor on my shelf. Um, 
these are great. And I, I only yeah. kind of watched the show, but the toys were, were really fun. Yeah, these are fantastic. Uh, what a great line. And then uh, we've got also, so uh, Lord was saying he bought the Total Justice figures because it was the only DC superhero figures available at the time, and they were hyper-muscled statues. Yeah, a lot of clip-on ports there, right? It would go back to that. So you had that line, Largo? Do you still have it? I'm telling you, that dark side looks like he's got promise, but everyone else kind of looks like, yeah, just a hyper-muscled... Uh, love the Transmetal series. Yep. Let's take a look back at Beast Wars. Uh, that Polar Claw. Look oh. at that. I love Polar Claw. I keep looking yeah. at prices on eBay. Yeah, Megatron, they have those in stores. They've been on clearance for like six months at my Walmart, but they're still $45. Uh, Optimus Primal, just love it. Scorponok, fantastic. That's 96 Hasbro. Oh, that's great. Uh, they even had a Superman line running at the same time. Uh, the Superman conversion coupe with exclusive Clark Kent figure, I think, is the standout of this line here. Because this... Uh, you put in Clark Kent, I guess, and then it does some gimmick where it flips over and turns into uh, Superman. That's kind of cool. And then this deluxe flying Superman, uh, I would love to get a hold of and actually fly over 25 feet. That's cool. But the deluxe vision blast Superman, that armor looks weird. Capture claw Superman, that armor looks kind of weird. This Kryptonian battle suit, though, man, look at that. That catches my eye. That looks great. And not, I'm not just saying for Superman toys. That thing's probably just great for any line. Uh, and Darkseid uh, looks like he's squatting to, to take a dump or something. I don't know what he's doing there. Uh, so you've got uh, Brainiac Deep Dive Superman. That Lex Luthor, although I didn't do a great job of capturing that. And then Quick Change Superman here. These uh, these are okay. Anyone a fan of these? Um, Salzburg saying that car was great. Batman had a Keaton one too. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. I'd like to see that. And then, of course, um, I saw this at the end of the catalog. And uh, just going back to Jim Largo there, he's saying, I don't have those total justice figures in my collection anymore. But they did look a lot better when you removed that silly clip on armor. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Um, and then the G.I. Joe Extreme. You like three and three quarter inches? Fuck you. We're going extreme. These are what, five inch figures. Uh, you've got Lieutenant Stone, Inferno, Spitfire, Detonator, Free. And is he holding, well, are those a bunch of grenades or is that like a big mace or something? I don't know what he's holding there. Um, Oh, yeah? They, they redid that Superman, the, the flying gimmick? That's kind of cool. Um, so then we've got Action Man. This came out in the mid-'90s. They did a swimmer, scuba diver, snowboard raider, tiger strike, power arm ninja, karate combat, Dr. X with toxic gut. Is that what that says? He has a toxic gut? Yeah. 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 Oh, sir. Yeah, Joe Extreme definitely had a very McFarlane style to them. Extreme sculpts with no articulation. Who needs articulation when you have extreme? Someone say Tiger. <laughs> uh, and uh, he has all those action man figures. Uh, doll, uh, toys, uh, action figures. Uh, so, yeah, that's great. Hey, and check this one out. This is one, Dragon Heart. I like this movie. I don't know. This was a, uh, to me, it was a, a great movie. I remember renting it, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I think they made several sequels. I can't say much about them, but the figures, I'd say probably not so much. They're probably just repurposed, uh, like Jurassic Park or uh, some some other thing there. Salzburg coming in uh, and just saying about that. Uh, Dr. X has a fluid in his chest upside in the back, upside on the box uh, so you can see it. So, oh, he's got some kind of, like like a like a goo inside him, and that gives him powers or something? I don't, okay. And you have the spy and the heli gun. Cool. So, yeah, the, 
The dragon, though, looks great. That electronic Draco. Uh, the griffin, I don't know about. And Bowen in the small... Uh, is it Draco or Draco? I'm probably saying it wrong. And then they threw in a Medusa dragon that I don't think was in the in the show or the movie at all. But it looks like a kind of cool figure there. Although I know there are some generic... Uh, there are generics that you know are just as good. And then we've got yet another Batman line, but I did want to bring up that Skywing street bike with Batman. That is a bat-faced motorcycle with bat wings that flies. And then these were also kind of the same as that. Look at the leg day uh, bane there in the center. That scarecrow looks kind of cool. And that Robin looks wicked with those like demon wings. Those are like... Uh, I don't know, um, Illidan Storm Rage, if you're a World of Warcraft fan. They look like uh, Demon Hunter wings. Uh, but no Captain Zargon. Okay. And then uh, Dragonheart was a fun movie. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Dragonheart was a fun movie. The sequel sucked, yes. And, uh, yeah, great figure. So, once again, this Ice Glow Bat Hammer. That's a really nice paint job on that, huh? I don't know. It's real shiny. Uh, Robin's uh, Redbird Cycle, the Batgirl's Ice Strike Circle, Sonic Batmobile, and then uh, the regular Batmobile. Looks kind of cool. Uh, these are the Batman and Robin line. And then this Wayne Manor Batcave Compound uh, is like a kind of trifold um, type of playset. Kind of interesting. Yeah, they made. I think they made like five variants of that playset because I had it for the Batman Returns line um, when it was brown and gray, and they they've used it for like four or five different sets. Yeah, they did. So yeah, so that's that. Uh, that's the the pamphlets that came with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, 